Hello. <sighs> Hello out there. Oh, I got some fluff, fluff there. How's everybody doing today? Now, let me just scroll up and see. <sighs> welcome, 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 everyone. Welcome. You might be watching live. If so, welcome. You might be watching once this has been archived, whenever it feels right for you to watch it. If that's the case, welcome to you too. Thanks for joining us for another Wednesday live stream, pop-up art studio, virtual art hive. There's a lot of different names for it, but no matter what you call it, uh, what it is, is me here with you for about an hour and a half, making art, chatting with you, chatting to myself sometimes, just exploring creativity and talking about different things that uh, have been popping up in community. Yeah, I think that's a good way of describing it. Uh, I'm here every Wednesday from usually from 2 p.m. till 3.30, but today I had to start a little later because I was working with Durham College's, uh, their fine arts community collaboration class, which is so exciting that we're back out there in community. Today was just a Zoom meeting, but week by week, we're gonna see how it goes. And when there are opportunities to be out there collaborating with students on site on campuses, uh, we will be there. And hopefully we'll be out there in community as well soon to connect and create with you, no matter where you are in Durham region, within reason. Um, but for today, hi, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, a place where you can create. I'll be making some stuff today. I've got some wonderful goop. I felt like doing a little bit of um, kind of paper mache work, maybe some mask building. Uh, so I made myself some cornstarch paste to do that with, which is pretty exciting. I always love it when I get a little messy. I don't always end up creating the most glamorous things, but it just feels good to use my hands and get in there and get a little dirty. Um, you're welcome to create along with me if you like. You don't have to create the same thing that I'm creating. Uh, you can do whatever feels right for you, wherever you are at. You could work on projects that you have lying around the house. If you're at work, maybe you want to sneak a little uh, doodles in the margins of whatever it is you're working on. Maybe it feels better to do something else entirely. If you're not feeling inspired, that's okay. You can do things that help you feel grounded, help you move forward. So that might be things like folding your laundry or perhaps making some lunch or some dinner, whatever that might be. Do what feels right for you. And of course, just because I'm here for an hour and a half doesn't mean that you also have to stay for an hour and a half. You can drop in and drop out as, as it feels comfortable to you. You can say hi and hang in there for a few minutes, or you can stay for the whole hour and a half, or you can go and come back as it feels right. That's okay. It's kind of like uh, what the art hive used to be in the storefront studio space. Not everyone wanted to stay the whole day. Sometimes people just came in to say hi and sit down for a moment to write something out or to make a quick piece of art. Others wanted to stay the whole day or, you know, just even came in to see if they could take a sneaky coffee with them for the road. You know what? Connection matters. And that's one of the reasons why we're here. To offer folks who may not be able to or feel comfortable getting out of their home right now, uh, we're giving you an opportunity to say hi and feel connected, even if you're just listening, just listening to this voice of mine and watching as I create whatever I create. All of that counts. That's one of the cool things about a virtual art hive and a live stream is that you get to use it in a way that feels right to you. And hello, I'm just seeing now everybody here. Nicole, Wendy, hi, Ashley. Oh, lovely. And we're talking, yeah, messy is the best. You're right, Ashley. And hello, Shelly. See, there are folks out there who are sharing space with us, even if they aren't sharing physical space with us. It's always good to know that, good to be reminded of that. And for everyone out there who might be listening or watching uh, without joining the chat, that's okay. You don't have to if you don't feel comfortable. I know you're there and I appreciate you. So I hope that whatever happens in today's live stream, that we can find a way to inspire you, to make you think, maybe to help lift you up, maybe to give you a laugh, right? Uh, there are moments where I think I make myself laugh and I definitely make other people laugh. It just happens. Uh, so whatever it is that we can do for you here today, I hope it gives you something just a little bit beautiful, a little bit interesting to help move your day forward and maybe give you a little lift, right? And of course, as always, after the live stream, 
I'll be posting a picture in a separate comment on Facebook about what I created today. And we want to give you an opportunity to post something that you've been working on as well. So community, feel free to check in on that show and tell post, say hi, look at what other people have been making, let them know you like it. And if folks during the chat here want to share things that they're working on, you can do that as well. You can post links or just let us know what you're up to, what you're working on. We love learning about that and hearing about it. And Ashley saying, <laughs> <laughs> uh, whenever you say hello such and such and such and such it reminds me of a romper room when she would look through the mirror at the end you know what I think about that all the time and I, I play with the idea of maybe having one of those just to look through and I see so and so and I see so and so there's a powerful thing that happens with that and I've been thinking about that show and how meaningful it must have been to a, like young people and kids everywhere the importance of hearing your name spoken out loud. Because let's face it, if we live on our own, or we've been away from folks, or don't get much of a chance to interact with community at large, or even if we do sometimes, we may not always have an opportunity to hear our names spoken out loud. That's a strange thing. I was reminded of that. There is a statistic, I think. Um, you know what, I haven't looked for an updated one, but it's regarding uh, street-involved communities, people who are homeless, oftentimes, they might hear their name like on an average four times a year, I think, was one of the statistics. If I'm getting that wrong, hold me accountable. Or you can post an updated statistics. But it's just a good reminder of sometimes the value in being seen and heard. Even if it's just me saying, hello, I see you, holding up my imaginary mirror and looking through. And Shelly says, I join the chat, but freak out when face to face. So do whatever feels good to you. That's right. So Shelly, for, there must be other folks out there like you. Sometimes the virtual art hub space is a lot more comfortable than the in-person space or even a Zoom workshop space. Because being seen sometimes can feel really vulnerable. Chatting or commenting can feel a lot more comfortable and a really nice way of kind of, you know, pushing yourself and testing those boundaries a little bit. And hopefully one day, um, maybe that'll help you feel a little more confident, to help you feel a little more comfortable when it comes to getting out there and having a little more experience in the face-to-face -face world. Not necessary, but it's not a bad thing if you do feel a little more comfortable as a result. So Shelly, thank you. And thank you for putting that out there for other folks who might be in a similar situation and feel that because things are beginning to move back to a little kind of normal and being out there, I think with that, there comes a, this other pressure that, well, if things are opening up again, I should be out there. I should be going out and being there in person. But you know what? It's important to be safe and to feel safe, whatever that means to you. And it's not necessarily the case. Gauge where you are at and figure out what feels right to you. And if that's being here, and chatting in the comments, I'm more than happy. And Nicole saying, oh, update on what Nicole's working on. Lately, I've been working on early Christmas gifts. Okay, folks, this is an interesting area because always around this time of year in the studio space when we had it, and now, you know, being in our own living rooms, wherever that might be for you, there is this creeping sense of making, making turns to gift making, I'm really curious about what people are thinking of creating for gifts this year, what that looks like. And maybe it's not what it used to look like. Um, but I always love learning about what people are thinking about making. Of course, you might want, not want it to be out there because it might be a surprise. So you can always feel free to send me a message later on if that feels more comfortable. Um, but this is a gift giving time. So you know what, in the weeks ahead, you might see me making some gifts or some gift ideas as well. In fact, one of the workshop ideas we have for the mobile art hive, I think I shared it with the Zoom group, the, the Tuesday morning virtual, <laughs> virtual art hive Zoom that we have, which is maybe too early for a lot of folks out there. It's 9.30 in the morning every Tuesday. Uh, but I shared one of the workshop, workshop kits that I'm, I'll be putting together. So I don't know if people can see that. So this is one of our ideas. We had this beautiful donation of fabric. Um, from an organization that is no longer called the Design Exchange. And a large part of that was this beautiful wool fabric, this woven textured fabric. And I was trying to think of different things we could do with it. Of course, you might have other ideas out there. So if you have ideas about how we can use this fabric as well, 
feel free to let me know. Always interested in what we can do for workshop kits or on-site collaboration ideas, uh, but I thought that would be a fun project to turn into scarves, some giant embroidery, uh, some giant stitch scarves. So even if you don't have a lot of experience with embroidery, um, or maybe you don't have needle felting supplies at home, you can use a blunt needle or even a, like a, one of those larger plastic lace needles. And the weave of this wool fabric is large enough that you can thread it through to give yourself some fun uh, designs on your scarf. And that would make a kind of nice gift, wouldn't it? A gift for yourself, maybe? I don't know, but I had a lot of fun with this idea. So if anyone else has other ideas, things that we can do with wool, let me know. And Barb, hi Barb, and happy belated birthday to you, Barb as well, I think. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, says Barb. Bright and sunny like all of you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and love the Romper Room reference. Romper Room, that's what it was called, Ashley. That show was like the first Zoom meeting with the magic mirror. <laughs> that is a really great observation. Yeah, because I think it was this sense of playing with that idea of magical thinking that youth have at certain ages and stages. Um, but also that idea of you're not alone. You might be a little kid sitting in front of your TV, but to know that someone out there knows that you exist, that you are important, that you matter. That's one of the things that made that show special. And I, I hope it's one of the things that makes any virtual art hive experience special that no matter where you are and what kind of day you're having or what you're heading into maybe, that at least you can have one moment to take for yourself to know that, yeah, you matter and that you exist in this world and that at least I for one am happy that you do exist in this world. And Ashley saying, yeah, re recognizing what Barb says, or the Brady Bunch intro reminds me of Zoom too. That is true. The Brady Bunch with all the windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Different kind of vibe though. Not so much my vibe, that. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. So, what am I going to work on today? Hmm. Definitely going to work on some paper mache, but we'll see where it goes and what it takes. But before I switch over to the making camera, um, I do want to let folks know that in the weeks ahead, this time might be shifting when we do the live streams from day to day because of the Durham College Community Collaboration class that I'm doing. They take place around the same time. So I might be shifting the time of this live stream a little later in the day, a little earlier in the day. I'll keep you updated about that. I hope you're okay with that. Let me know if there's any times that feel better to you. Um, that information is always helpful. There'll be two days in particular where I have to move things around a little bit to accommodate that class. Um, but hopefully it'll come back to reward everyone because I think one of the things the class will be working on is creating more content and programming for you, more workshop kits for everyone once the mobile art hive is up and out there in the community. And I don't know if folks remember some of the live streams that we did last year. I loved the Instagram ones in particular where a student would guide me through uh, an artistic technique or process that I wasn't necessarily familiar with. We had so much fun with that activity. And yeah, I think I might be posting those on YouTube soon because they were really lovely and I wanna get them out there into the world. Yeah, working with students, always a rewarding experience. All right, Nicole saying I'm making, oh, excellent, gifts, perfect. Nicole is making dish towel toppers. They look so cute. They are some sewing, crocheting, knitting patterns online for free. I find them very fun to make. So are those the ones that you would like stitch the tea towel onto and then you can hook them over the rail or the doorknob so you always have them handy when you're washing dishes? I love those. I mean, I don't wanna, I mean, if you're making some, I mean, I, I they're really awesome. And I could use, um, no, you don't have to make things for me. I feel like I'm bribing folks when I do that, but I do love them. They are so handy. <laughs> and Barb says, thank you for the birthday wishes. And yeah, with regards to that Brady Bunch window, the Zoom windows at the front of that show, which I will now not be able to think of in any other way than the Brady Bunch. Whenever I have, when I have my next Zoom meeting, that's exactly what I'm gonna be thinking about. Um, yeah, not so much my vibe, just too much going on. And that's coming from me with a brain there's so much, like so much bubbling all the time. Too much. 
Uh, but yes, thank you, Barb. <laughs> All right, so let's see what happens. If I switch over, no, oh, not that one, not that one, no, no, not yet. Haha, -ha, this one, that's where we want to go right now. Every once in a while, my computer decides to reorganize itself, and I get really... Yeah, all the buttons change, and I don't know why. And Nicole says, yes, you can make hangers that are plain or look like things. I've made ones that look like dresses before. Oh, Nicole, that sounds amazing. If anyone's interested, I mean, Nicole, maybe would you be able to put, like, is there a link to one that you can think of that you find really accessible, nice and easy to work with? That might be something fun for community members to try if you wanted to post it in the live stream here. All right, folks, I don't know if this is... Uh, I was hesitant to share pictures of this online because it's a little bit freaky, but I'm thinking about mask making. And I'll show you some examples first. So I have some of these guys here. Boop! Different masks that I've made over time. They can be a little weird though, a little intense, because I like making masks to, not necessarily to wear as part of costumes, although you can totally do that. And of course, with Halloween coming up, I suppose it's a great idea, something that you can try. Um, but when it comes to making masks, to me, it always has something to do with expressing a different part of my personality or revealing, kind of exploring a different aspect of who I am in a physical way. So these are some of the masks that I've made out of paper mache and plaster of Paris over time. Oh, and Nicole says, yes, I can see if I can find some patterns. Excellent. Thank you so much, Nicole. So generous. So these are a few masks that I've made. This one was out of paper. It's a Comedia mask, a Comedia inspired mask. Um, you can tell like with big arch eyebrows and a big nose and things like that, sort of for this theatrical kind of effect. And I made that with paper. That's an old one that I've had hanging around for quite a while. This is more of an art mask that I made that again speaks to something a little spookier. And maybe I would make this for Halloween. But you can see how they are very strange and eerie out of context. This is one I started working on and I just never returned to. So I might continue building upon this one today. I'd love to get your feedback folks. What should I work on today with the cornstarch paper mache goo that I've made. And if anyone's interested, I can take you through the process of how I made this form, which is my face. It's kind of weird looking at my face. And I think, yeah, it's just weird, right? I think it's always weird looking at someone's face out of context when it's not animated, when it's without life in it. But, uh, Ew, gross, what's that? This one's been sitting around in my studio for a bit, so I think it has pencil crayon shavings inside of it. But for a moment, I'll just sort of put it over my face so you can see. So this was the original piece that I made to build my masks off of. And this was just using... Whew, plaster strips. With lots of Vaseline on my face, plaster of Paris strips dipped in water, laid over my face. I think I got fun plaster goop on my face and anyone can do this it's not that expensive either so if you want to make yourself a personalized mask um masks of course during this time this day and age have a different meaning as well but it's not that difficult so you can pick up plaster of paris strips at any craft store these days curry's michael's you can order them online some of you might have gauze strips and plaster of Paris powder that you can mix to create your own. And the one thing you want to be careful is that your, you know, any hair is pinned back out of the way, covered, that your face is, has a coating of something to keep any hair that's on your face safe. You don't want to accidentally, unintentionally wax your eyebrows, as has happened to friends of mine in the past. And then you can use this as an opportunity to make your own the base for your face. And then what I did with this, once it was done, is I flipped it, supported it, and then filled it with plaster of Paris mix, going through a similar process of lining the inside of that mask with Vaseline. So this then becomes a plaster of Paris version of my face. Very weird, very strange. And I don't know why I started thinking about this today. I think 
And let me know anyone if you're out there and you've been having like similar kind of feelings. I think um, I've just been feeling very weird lately. And having these moments of trying to comprehend everything that's going on in the world and feeling slightly like I am not myself. I am myself, <laughs> but at the same time, not quite myself. So whenever those moments come up for me, I always begin thinking about this face and masks, the masks that we wear in life to help us get by, the masks that we wear to perform sometimes, the masks that we wear to protect ourselves. And of course, when I was talking to Lottie yesterday in the amazing live stream uh, chat that we had on Instagram, Lottie reminded me of, and I've been reminded of this several times this week actually, of, as a person who is autistic, the masking that people on the spectrum sometimes do, or especially in their earlier days before they really know what's, you know, how their brain works, the masking that they do to try to blend in, to be like everyone else. And I think, again, to different degrees, obviously, but I think each one of us can relate to that a little bit, a little bit. And what I like about making a mask, an actual mask for ourselves, is that we have an opportunity to examine it and make meaning of it in a positive way, rather than letting it be something that happens to us unconsciously, right? Does that make sense? And you can make a mask for fun or for kind of therapeutic reasons, but today I'm not sure what this mask is going to be about. And of course I will build on it as the weeks go ahead because it needs to dry in between layers and all of that. So perhaps I will experiment with this and just try it and see what happens, yeah? And ex explore these ideas of what it is to be and like to be in the middle somehow, in this liminal space. And last week I was talking about that. So this is a continued theme, I suppose, you know, living with uncertainty and looking at, you know, just being conscious of how we move through the world and doing our very best on any given day to move through the world with a kind of positivity, a positive intention, a wellness intention, if nothing else. And I haven't used this mask, uh, this base in such a long time. So forgive me if it looks really weird. I'll get off the first layer and put it aside and move on to the, some other fun stuff. And Ashley's saying, making ma masking helps people to fit into what is expected by society when you think about it it is expected that people have to be a certain way to fit into what society looks like at the norm and this idea again of what is normal right at the living room we talked about that a lot um, as a way of reminding one another that there is no normal there is absolutely no normal and i think that was something we felt really comfortable saying um, but then when you find yourself confronted with things that are so different and unusual, or as, you know, the term that people really like to use, unprecedented, um, it can challenge that idea because we want a kind of normal. We want a structure in our life. So providing a structure for ourselves that makes sense to us becomes the important thing. Um, finding a way to healthily be present in our own life and to make choices about how we present ourselves. And Ashley says, yeah, there are no, there are norms, but society has a way they want people to fit in. So yeah, there are no normal, but there are cultural expectations, aren't there? And I think I'd be, I think I'd definitely be lying if I think um, like some there are some ways of engaging and being and moving through the world that I think are compassionate and polite and good to be mindful of. I think there are things that as a culture, as a society, that we appreciate, right? And there are things that can change and be adapted to meet people's needs. Things that weren't normal five or 10 years ago become normal now when, how, you know, when things, things change, we adapt. We adapt to engage differently. So how do we move through the world, right? And when we need to challenge those norms so that we can feel safe, so that we can feel accepted, it's an interesting journey, isn't it? 
I mean, it's a really big question, and maybe one that can't be answered in a live stream on Facebook. But it's something I've been thinking about an awful lot lately. And then, of course, I've been thinking uh, just about the whimsical side of who we are and how we present ourselves. And all the possibility that's there as well. So it could be like Lottie, again, talking about this idea of how we dress, the kind of makeup we wear, how we choose to present ourselves, right? How we make ourselves up, how we, you know, the different trends we choose to welcome into our life, whatever that might be. I can add a little water into this and give it a mix. So this is a starchy paste that I made with cornstarch. Um, let's see, do I have it? My fa one of my favorite art tools in the world. Oh, I don't seem to have one on hand. A stick, good old sticks. So this might look a little gross. It's cornstarch and water and salt. And I've heated it up on the stove a little bit. You can also do this with with a kettle if you want to make some of your own. It creates a really strong paste. We use it in our giant puppet building all the time. And I like it much more than the flour paste that I feel isn't as strong. And this one's good too. You can adapt it by adding in glue. This is also a paste that's great for making pinatas or any other kind of paper mache form that you have. Totally recommend it. So there is a whimsical side too, this idea of, you know, we have choice. We can play with our identities. We can play with people's expectations of us. And maybe that idea of what normal is, maybe part of who we are, what we do in daily life can be to challenge that. If there's something we don't like about how people have come to accept us or understand us. Maybe we want to change, extend a different part of our personality. Shake things up. We can do that too. So I'm thinking about all of those things today. And I don't know how it's going to manifest through the making of the mask. I think I'm going to discover it along the way. Now, if you are at home and thinking, I'm interested in making a mask, you don't have to go through this whole process that I've done. I think this was, if you think you might make a lot of masks in your future, definitely recommend this because you'll have something that fits your unique face. All right, that seems, that seems to be about, about right. Yeah, you'll have something that is fitted to your face that you can, it'll be more comfortable than any store-bought masks. But the other thing that's really, really, really interesting about this process is it might, well, it'll last longer. It's a little more easy to paint once you have it all finished, but you can also use store-bought masks. There's nothing wrong with that. You can even use a store-bought mask to build a mask off of in the same way that I've done this here. You can a plastic mask and then cover it with uh, some Vaseline or something to ensure that it doesn't, let's see, give myself some room. <laughs> just making sure to cover it with uh, Vaseline or something so it's a little easier to remove. Of course, with this mask, even with the Vaseline on there, when I remove it, when I lift it off after, some layers on the inside will probably still come off. That's just the way it is, and that's okay. So we build a few layers that it'll be strong enough when we lift it off that it'll still maintain its shape and we can continue building. And Barb says, that mask is amazing. I would take pictures of it and try makeup ideas on it. See, there you go. There's another way of exploring, just seeing yourself externalized somehow. It's different than looking in a mirror. When I look at this, uh, I'm definitely seeing myself in a completely unique way. My brain is, kind of challenged into seeing myself maybe as as I am, right? 
when I look in the mirror, I have all these other things going on in my head, right? Maybe self-esteem things, maybe I'm having a good day, maybe a bad day. When I look at this, I see something of myself that I don't always see when I look in the mirror. So it's a really, really interesting thing to try if you have the materials to do so. But you know what? As I mentioned, if you don't, that's okay. You can use a plastic mask that you find at the dollar store or at any, any craft store usually has forms that you can do. And I know there are a lot of folks out in the community that have participated in mask making into various groups and exhibits before. So feel free to let me know what that experience was like for you. And Carlos, hello Carlos. Howdy y'all, I hope you're staying safe and well. The mask looks awesome. <laughs> oh, thank you, Carlos. It's so good to hear from you. I think there might be a happy belated birthday to you as well. A lot of Virgos out there in the world. I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. And it's always great when folks join us. And I know, again, just another reminder for folks, if you can't stay for the whole live stream, that's okay. We started a little later today, so I'm going to be here until 4 p.m. So you're welcome to hang in for the whole hour and a half and watch me create this really goopy thing. But then if you need to go, that's all right. You can go, you can come back, you can watch it later once it's been archived. There's many different ways to enjoy the virtual art hive experience. But all the same, thank you for being here, even if you can only spend a few minutes. Oh, oh, goodness, looks like some of my hair is being built into this mask, and you know what, that's only fitting. No worries. Oh, maybe it is, that's, I'm just, now you're just tangled up around my fingers. Ew, gross. Don't know why it's gross. It's just my hair. Let's see. No, undoubtedly there will also be, there will be cat hair that gets built into this mask. I've already come to accept that. With four cats in whatever art you make, cat hair is going to become a part of it. I've yet to find an artist who's figured out a way around that. Oh, see, and this is where things get messy when I start grabbing all my supplies with my hands. <laughs> way of the art, it's the way of the mess. Yeah, how many folks out there have made a mask of themselves before? I'd be interested to know. <laughs> and Ashley says, regarding my hair or the cat hair, just a little bit of, ex a little extra bit of character. <laughs> and that is, that is often the case, isn't it? I think we've talked about that before too, the, like seeing, uh, I mean, that's one of the things that I miss that I haven't had a chance in a while to appreciate is going to a gallery to see some art. And when you get up close, you can see, you know, in some cases, depending on how the artist worked in a painting, for example, you can see their fingerprint, their prints in the paint, or you see the bristles of the brush that got caught up with it. There are beautiful little human imprints on anything that is handmade and often things that are digitally made as well. It, it's a, it looks a little different in the end, but as I've learned and I'm learning through all the folks I know who work with digital art, that little bit of the human touch just looks, just presents in a slightly different way. Hey, Austin, how you doing? Austin, so good to see you. What are you working on these days? This, if I remember correctly, tends to be a busy time of year for you too, with Halloween coming up. Yeah, and is anyone working on a Halloween costume? I know, again, like last year, Halloween might look a lot of, like, very different this year. But I suppose nothing stops us from dressing up in our own homes and enjoying the holiday in our own special way. Oh, Nicole has to go. Bye, Nicole. Nicole says stay safe and have a great week, everyone. Right back at you, Nicole. Thank you for being here. And can't wait to see how those uh, tea towel things work out. And I know some folks may not be able to stay because I am starting a little later today. Because sometimes this would be a time uh, 
for some folks to go to do other things. So if you got to go, don't worry, won't take it personally. Won't take it personally at all. I'm wondering if maybe what I make right now, hmm. I'm thinking that maybe it's not a full face mask. Oh, <laughs> and I think I'm seeing, oh, Laura Ann Brown as the living room saying, oh, hi, I'm here. Bye, Nicole. <laughs> hi, Laura, how you doing? I know sometimes with uh, the uh, devices, it can be tricky. switching in and out for all of our living room folks who do wonderful live stream for us. The technical, the, do we call them gremlins? They aren't always nice. They challenge us. <laughs> oh, and then Ashley saying, who is, oh, hi, I am here. And that is Laura. So just in case, following up on that, in case you're wondering. And Austin saying, I've not been doing much of anything yet in the Halloween department, but I have been doing a little bit of drawing here and there. Oh, beautiful. Austin's drawings, for folks who don't know, are just beautiful. Now, I haven't seen anything recent, so I'm not sure if you've moved on, like if you're working on different styles of drawings these days, different themes in your work. And the last time we talked, and maybe that was in our Instagram artist chat, which thank you so much. It was amazing. And if folks, if you, if you know Austin or if you don't know Austin and you haven't had a chance to watch it yet, such a lovely chat. It was just beautiful. Um, Austin's work is exciting and precise and just full of character. And it's full of Austin as well, which is lovely. And Carlos is saying, very cool mask. It's looking like a warrior helmet. Love it. And I'm thinking, yes, yeah, something like that, interestingly enough, but with a little whimsy as well. So, and so my choice right now is, do I continue in that warrior helmet vein and kind of create something that doesn't necessarily cover my whole face, but has that sense of protection? And I'll be gauging it a little bit by looking looking into the camera here. Let's see if I can build this up a little bit. And maybe a whimsical warrior of sorts. And Laura says, oh, okay, let's see. Oh, oh no, now my hands are so gooey, I can't, gooey, I can't scroll. Oh no, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, let's figure it. So Laura says, oh wait, I think there's something from Ashley there too. Uh, oh yes, Ashley saying plasticine and cat hair is not very good either. Yeah, but you know, like you said, it gives it character. And Laura says, just an explanation, went to the page and switched, but it switched me back. So now we have Laura as Laura when Laura was before as the living room. That's okay, any which way you're here, I'm happy that you're here. It's good to have you here, Laura. And Carlos saying, yeah, just a warrior helmet. I'm thinking about that. And maybe I need a whimsical warrior. Maybe I need something of an art warrior. Maybe that's where this is leading. Someone to help protect my creative spirit. <laughs> and people saying hi to Laura now that they know it's Laura. Oh, and Lottie. Hi, Lottie. Lottie saying Halloween isn't really celebrated in our house, but I would, <laughs> I would like to dress up as Hufflepuff, as a Hufflepuff this year. Lottie, go for it. Now I'm trying to think, I mean, obviously there are house colors, but what would this Hufflepuff look like? Or as you said, as you mentioned in our, in our live stream yesterday, which again, was awesome. Folks, if you haven't watched it yet, watch it or listen to it. Such a joy talking to Lottie, getting to see her and hear her. Um, there's, did you say, I remember you saying Luna Lovegood as Hufflepuff instead of Ravenclaw. So have you ever dressed up as Luna Lovegood before? That would be interesting. I mean, yeah, of course, it'd be really fun too. 
And Simone saying, oh my goodness, Mary, I have been thinking about masks lately too. <gasps> so, okay, the, I'm always fascinated when there's something in that, well, the collective unconscious, as Jung might put it, but it's usually that when there's an idea out there, you're not the only one that has this idea that other people must be thinking about it too. So a lot, I'm, I'm so happy, Simone, to know, <laughs> to hear that I'm not the only one. Simone says, I've been thinking about masks lately too. So interesting. You are thinking about this as well. Was thinking about the idea of creating a superhero mask as a physical representation of how we show up for ourselves. And it's already got a like from someone in the community. And yep. Yeah, Go for it. That idea is very powerful for so many reasons. And I think, again, there's something just about seeing yourself in a different way, outside of yourself, different, well, maybe not very different than a portrait, but something about mask building or mask making, whether you do it from scratch or if you buy a mask that you transform or even draw a, drawing a mask on a page and then creating on that as a base it can be pretty powerful to see it outside of yourself and, and explore different aspects of what you want what you need those things you know about yourself that you know maybe only you know how do you represent them the things that you want to have more of in your life how do you represent that um, there's a lot of potential in projects like that and I know that, again, every time I create a mask of myself, and I haven't done it in years. So the masks I showed earlier at the beginning of the live stream, those were ones I think, oh, wow, I think I created those maybe 10 years ago. So it has been a long time since I've taken a moment to build a mask for myself. Um, so I feel like this is long overdue, and I'm glad I'm doing it. I was a little nervous at first. Because it feels, sometimes it feels a little creepy to share your face like this with some, with the world, right? And that might be strange for people tuning in to see my face like this as well. But, oh. <laughs> and Lottie's saying, I propose that we replace masks with dino suits. <laughs> and uh, Ashley's saying, uh, before that, you know that blow up dino suits, I keep thinking would be fun because it, it's self-contained with COVID, I suppose so, and going grocery shopping, Halloween thoughts maybe, uh, made me think of it again. You had to go out in one of those, are they inflatable? You kind of put yourself in an inflatable dinosaur suit? <laughs> Definitely something to explore. Definitely. I've never worn one or rented one before, but I'm not going to say, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to say no. Never say never. <laughs> never say never. And Lottie is definitely on board. <laughs> so instead of wearing masks out to keep us safe, each one of us just wears our own dinosaur suit. It would definitely get crowded in the grocery store pretty quick. I think on buses, trains, trams, I think that would also be, it would be hysterical to see. It would be really funny. Maybe, okay, how about this as a happy medium, a suggestion? Yes, and you did start something, Ashley. What about a day? Kind of like the zombie walks that happen out there in the world or that used to happen. On, maybe, you know, maybe they're happening again this year in some places. I think I might've seen something about that. But maybe one day, for dinosaur outfits, where people wear dinosaur outfits. It's just like a day of celebrating that and being able to move through the world in a slightly different, fun way and just to have that experience. I sp there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's amazing. I mean, being able to experience something in a slightly different way can be super empowering, right? And especially, it's kind of like a vacation from yourself a little bit while still being yourself. And Ashley is clarifying, yes, they have blow up dino suits and blow up unicorn suits. Oh, perhaps there, something has been started here. I think we have a few folks in the community who love the unicorns. I mean, who doesn't love a unicorn really? Unless it's like a cabin in the woods kind of unicorn. See, now I'm thinking about Halloween and scary movies and stuff like that. 
Safety first, though, everyone. Safety first. <laughs> and I think Halloween is such an interesting tradition here in in sort of Western culture, anyways, in, in North American culture, because it's it's less about can like it's more about candy for the kids, I think. And well, candy's also always amazing. I can't, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But I think there's still this desire each one of us has to dress up and push the boundaries and explore different aspects of our personalities, even if only for once a year. Oh, and Carlos says, gotta head off now, uh, but loving the creations and discussions. Have a safe and awesome week, y'all. Be excellent to yourselves and each other. Oh, and stay hydrated. <laughs> Thank you, Carlos. And uh, Carlos says, thanks later, y'all. And I say adieu to you, too. Have a wonderful, safe day and a wonderful week ahead, Carlos. And to anyone else who maybe has to go as well, that's okay. Thank you for being here. And I hope wherever you are, wherever you're heading is lovely. Oh, definitely harder to tear things when your hands are all covered in goop. Yeah, but I do love that idea, Simone, of the masks, the superhero masks about how we show up for ourselves. Because that introduces conversations about our resilience, our power, our compassion for ourselves, right? Uh, it invites us to really... It's one of those beautiful things that we don't often have time to explore. Or we don't often find ourselves spontaneously exploring. Is What is amazing about myself? What is super about myself. What traits do I have and perhaps I alone have that enable me to move through this world in a beautiful, unique way? What wouldn't I trade, right? What is so special? What can I be more aware of so that later on as, you know, we can build upon it, amplify it, call upon it when we need to. So send out that signal into the sky that enables us to call on that aspect of ourselves, right? It's one thing if it's something that is, you know, unconsciously happens, that's okay. But if you become more aware of it, those aspects of ourselves, and I think that's part of the whole part of projects like this, you can kind of consciously introduce them when you want to. And that makes me, of course, Think about you, Nikitty, and my talk with Lottie yesterday. You know, the different aspects of ourselves, um, personas that help us navigate things and do the things that we love to do, even when it's difficult to do them. And for some people, you know, it maybe not is, it's not maybe a, a character, maybe it's a special pair of shoes or that shirt that you really like, a favorite shirt or, uh, a hat, <laughs> right? Maybe it's the way you do your makeup. Maybe you're like, I'm just gonna do some, I'm gonna wear nail polish, I'm gonna do some fantastic eye makeup and I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna stand out. Or maybe it's the reverse, something that helps you, I mean, blend, right? So far I've been considering these things in the, in the way of standing out and looking different than the norm. But what if there are tools we use to help us blend a little bit more, right? And that leans back towards, you know, that conversation of masking to help look like normal people, but it's perhaps for different reasons. Things that help you feel free, that help you maybe feel anonymous, help you feel uh, a different part of yourself, but for different reasons. Just have space and to have breath. I know there are definitely days where I want to go out into the community and talk to everyone and say hi and catch up, you know, when I'm taking my dog Alice for a walk. And there are days where I just want to have time for myself. And so, you know what, I suppose in that case, I might put on my sunglasses, right? I might put in the headphones when I'm on the walk. And that's kind of that symbol, isn't it? That I'm in my own space. I'm cool don't necessarily want to engage with anyone else right now, just want to do my thing. And that's all right as well. So it is another way of presenting yourself to the world to, for that, you know, for wanted effect. Oh, 
Oh, this is really goopy stuff I've made. It's really good. If I don't say so myself. So just on a note of practicality. Oh, 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 oh no. Itchy nose. Okay. Laura. Hello, Laura again. Laura says, I love this idea. Emily's teacher posts a whiteboard question every day. Monday was, what's the superpower you would like? M? M would say, what did M say? To be invisible, right? So again, not everybody wants to be seen in a specific way or a different way. Sometimes we want to have quiet and want to have that ability to move through the world a little silently or a little stealthily in some way, even if it's just for us and for nobody else. I'm gonna stay hydrated on that note from Carlos, gonna have some tea. And that's a really interesting thing too, that that superhero idea is also out in the world. It's interesting, right? Perhaps speaking to this desire that all of us have somehow, some way, I mean, it's, kind of self-care, but taken to the ultimate, right? When we begin thinking in superhero metaphors or analogies, can't remember which one is which. You know, the superhero is the person who can show up and be there in a really specific, special way, who has our back, who maybe does things that we don't feel like we can do without a little boost, without a little bit of help. The superhero maybe is that person who helps us anticipate our needs as well. Maybe we don't see it coming and the superhero shows up and says, I got this. Such excellent metaphors all so that leads to an interesting question. Let's ask everyone the question that Emily's school teacher asked or Em's teacher asked. If you had a superpower, what superpower would you like? It's a good question. It's a good question. And you know what? I don't know how I would answer it. When I play D&D, &D, there is this spell I have that I haven't used yet. Um, that has to do with kind of chilling everyone out a little bit, like causing uh, an emotional uh, de-escalation, a response like that. And I always think there have been moments where I like, I wish I had that power in real life. I wish there was a way that I could help everyone feel better. I wish there was a way I could just kind of take the sting out of things to help remind us all, including myself sometimes, that things will be different or can be different. And Ashley has just asked, what is D&D? &D? Oh, ho, ho. Well, Ashley, uh, when I say d and I'm talking about Dungeons and Dragons. So folks out there, anyone else out there play Dungeons and Dragons or watch Dungeons and Dragons? Because now, of course, online, you can watch different uh, groups play Dungeons and Dragons or other kinds of role playing games. Uh, it's, and it's super fun and super lovely. So Dungeons and Dragons, you might be familiar with that name. Oh, oh, I'll come back to that in a moment, Barb. Dungeons and Dragons is a role-playing game where basically you, with a guide, like a, in Dungeons and Dragons it's a dungeon master, but sometimes more often these days we call them game masters, people who guide you through a story and you choose a character that you play. Uh, so in my group with my, my, uh, my team, I am a gnome. Yeah, I'm a gnome. I'm a war cleric gnome. And you get to, I get to experience just play in this character, as this character in the story. So sometimes I make decisions that Mary would make. Uh, a lot of times I make decisions purely because I can 
explore something different in the world of this game. It's like a choose your own adventure. And when you have a good group of people to play with and a good game master, it can be so enjoyable and uh, enjoyable, liberating, exciting to try out these different aspects of, of character play, kind of like acting. So that when I'm not able to act, I get a little boost uh, of, what it, of being an actor again, which is lovely. So that, in short, is a very, very brief description of what D&D is. But if there are other people out there watching or listening, if you want to explain it in greater depth, please feel free. And if you've never experienced it before or tried it out, I think, I'm trying to think of what the best entry point is, if you want to learn more, I might recommend, uh, this is a very famous kind of Dungeons and Dragons group that plays. Uh, they're a group called Critical Role. And they do lots of wonderful stuff out there as well. A lot of charity stuff. Uh, lovely group of voice actors based out of LA who started playing together years ago and have now kind of built this wonderful community. And a lot of Dungeons and Dragons things feel exactly like that, like communities. And again, finding the right group to play with or the right group to watch is something that's up to you. And it is a time investment though. Games usually last two hours to four hours so it's a, it's a big investment <laughs> but sometimes like that's why starting watching a group that you love can be really enjoyable and you get a sense of whether it's not something that you'd like to play at the living room for a while we had a wonderful we had a Dungeons and Dragon group that would play out of the space on Sundays run by Liam that was fantastic uh, and you know what? Who knows? You never know in the future there could be other living room Dungeons and Dragons groups again. So it's always a possibility. So getting back to superhero stuff, Barb says, I think I would like teleportation. Oh, yeah. So I could be there for others in need of my help. And isn't that something too, right? Yeah, teleportation, Barb, would be brilliant. That's a really good one. It's also good because you could get grocery done, shopping done really quickly. Just take like a heartbeat, right? No parking required. <laughs> but that feeling of wanting to be there for other people in need and that moment of need. What a beautiful thing. What a beautiful thing. What a beautiful community. Barb, thank you for that. That's lovely. Absolutely lovely. And what would teleportation be like? What would it do for us outside of making certain errands much simpler to do? I wonder if there'd be, I mean, there would be lovely benefits of being able to see people, not only when they were in need, but when you needed them perhaps as well, you know, not having to be separated so much by time or space. And Ashley says to Barb, I think you must have a very big heart. And I agree. And in fact, I think I know Barb does. So I can testify to that. And it's okay for anyone out there who might have been having a superpower that was a little more, um, less about helping other people. That's okay too. Superpowers can also be about helping ourselves. To be able to see or imagine things in a different way, perhaps, or to be able to... I mean, whenever we, because the, I guess, suppose the truth of it is, folks, when we do help ourselves, we inevitably end up helping others. It is that, there's something about that that rings true, doesn't it? But before we can be there for other people, we need to be there for ourselves. That's just the way it is. And I think sometimes we might without meaning to jump to help other people before we're ready or without imagining the consequences and that can be that can be difficult for everyone right and sometimes we see that in community with people who have really great ideas of how they want to be there but you know it's not always easy to be there for others we would see that sometimes at the living room um, best intentions in the world of people wanting to be there and to do good in the world. And it's one of those art hive things as well that I, I think until you experience an art hive, 
it's one of the reasons why it's so important to be a part of an art hive before you perhaps run an art hive or operate an art hive or found an art hive, whatever the case might be. Um, because I think we have these ideas of how we want to help people, but until you learn about people and until you learn about where your own edges are and what your capacity is to recognize how much can you give. And being able to to do that, to give from a place without expectations or with very specific guidelines, you know, being able to be transparent about what your expectations are. Um, it's imp that's an important piece of the puzzle. And not everyone thinks about that in that process. It's part of that concept of radical hospitality that all art hives have. And we use that term a lot, but don't often, don't often take time to reflect about, okay, what, is, what does that mean exactly? And radical hospitality has a lot to do with understanding what our own boundaries are, what our own needs are, what we need to hold on to or exchange or receive or give for our own well-being and strength and what we expect of other people. I always think of radical hospitality in the sense of if someone came over to your home, you wouldn't necessarily let them wear muddy rain boots throughout your house, if they were aware of it especially you'd probably ask them to take off their boots at the front door or to wipe them on the mat. You wouldn't not say something just because you didn't want to make them feel uncomfortable or upset. That's a part of radical hospitality, of knowing about yourself enough so that you can be there for other people in a way that's manageable. Does that make sense? Maybe not. But I think it's an important conversation that maybe we don't always talk about as much as we should or could because it allows your heart, like a heart like Barb's, to be fully present when you know, when you have a greater awareness of who you are and what you need to do for your own, for yourself and your own self-care. And Ashley's saying, oh, interesting, yeah, one thing COVID has brought me is a whole new group of artistic special people. Ah, oh, thank you. And that um, a different community I would never have found before. That's a really beautiful thing to share. Thank you. Thank you. And I think too that there's, that's one of the things I was trying to explain to the students in the community collaboration class too, that it's not the same as the studio space. It's different, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Oh, itchy nose again. And might be different, but not less not less than. And Barb saying, thank you, Mary. How thoughtful of you. I am learning balance of self-help and helping others. I do this exercise every day where you stand on one foot with your arms out to the side. You meditate for a few moments and make sure you are balanced both physically and mentally. Hmm. I love that exercise. You know what? I, one of the things I love about that is that's something you can do wherever you are in any moment you might be in, in any situation. I mean, you might look a little strange in certain circumstances, but I think what a fantastic tool to have in your kit. And as long as you're kind of gauging and being able to check in with yourself to see, okay, where am I at right now? That's a beautiful one to help you kind of regain balance and ground yourself again in who you are, what you need before kind of moving out there into the world. That's beautiful, Barb. Thank you so much. Barb, you always have such amazing resources and skills to share. And Simone saying, I'm also thinking of this idea that everything we visualize physically, symbolically on the superhero warrior mask are powers we can actually access as our normal selves. Yep, I feel like the mask can be a powerful affirmation practice. I agree. And it's one of those things that I suppose you don't truly no until you have a chance to do. So I invite everyone to give it a go, even if you're just drawing it out on a piece of paper. Why not try it? Try it for yourself and see. And Simone saying back to Barb again, yep, I love this about that meditation practice, that lovely little moment uh, for self-care and self-grounding. Physical practice can help gain mental flexibility. Well said, Simone, nicely said. Nicely said indeed, yeah. All right, 
So what do I want to do here? I want to wipe my hands for a moment and take a little step back. I have a good base right now. Also looking at my mask helps me see that my nose is a little crooked. I knew that already though. I do like the idea that it's feeling like a little bit like a warrior mask, something that someone might wear into battle, maybe an art battle in my case. I think there's something to do with creativity and protection here perhaps. Not necessarily in a bad way, like not necessarily protection from evil, but just an awareness of carrying that forward somehow for myself. This is interesting. So I might want to build up. Now, I don't want to add too many layers while it's wet, but there are certain things I can add on now that I know will dry. So maybe this is where I get the pipe cleaners out and start building on some uh, mask accessories. And Ashley is saying, it's not less, but yes, different. For what I heard about the studio, it was a special place, but you have taken that magic and put it in here. Also, when the bus is uh, on the road, it will be keeping that magic and it will keep that magic going. But again, every, every phase of the project, it's like a living work of art. I think every art hive might be, that we evolve and we grow and we change and we adapt and we respond. So every time we return to it, we're a little different and as a result the space is a little different whether it's a virtual space we're creating or a physical space we're creating which is one of the things I love about it it's never the same day twice never even if you're doing the exact same activity it's always different it's always alive it's always dynamic I love it and again I will remind everyone that the space is made by those that contribute to it so everything that you are loving about these moments, about these conversations, uh, even for folks who aren't participating in the chats or the conversations, they are that way because of how you're contributing to it. That's one of the things I love about Art Hives. There's a tone that's that. I think that's very true by the people who contribute to it, who hold the space, if you will. Um, it's you, it's all of us. We create the space. Right? Aww. And Simone's saying that it's so beautiful. There's so much beautiful that's happening. All these beautiful conversations. All these beautiful ideas of creativity. Let's see what I can do. Now I might use pipe cleaner. I have some wire here as well. I'm going to use the pipe cleaner just because I think the paper will adhere to the mask and the goo will kind of stick with the cleaner, the pipe cleaner a little bit more. But let's see what I can do. What do I want here? I feel like I want the, the mask to have some kind of wing or wings, if that makes sense. Still don't know what that looks like, but let's see. I feel like, yeah, like fins of some sort maybe. Or petals, like a flower. Oh, see, this is where you can have some fun with this. So I'm just going to start making some shapes aside here. So let me find a little space. And do I want to use this brown paper? Do, 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 do. You know what? I'm going to use some painter's tape. So this is a little trick I learned from Jumblies. Oh, Bat Lady, Ashley's saying. Hmm, Bat Lady. <laughs> Maybe. I wasn't thinking about bats. I was thinking, but um, I mean, who knows? It could morph in that direction. Bats are pretty awesome. So I learned this process from Jumbly's Theatre Company. Um, I think they're, th are they still a theatre company? They must be. And they make a lot of things. They're like, they have a lot of really simple, beautiful, accessible, creative practices. And one of the things they do, they make finger puppets, they make masks oftentimes just by crumpling up paper, creating a base that's really flexible, like with masking tape. So let's say you didn't have, you know, you don't have a lot of materials at home. Like newspaper is one of those interesting things that is getting harder to, harder to source, oddly. If you don't receive a newspaper, if you don't have newspapers delivered, if you don't have a whole lot of junk mail going on, 
you won't necessarily have newspaper. So with paper mache, you got to get creative. So you can, the great thing about using painter's tape and news like crumpled up paper, you might, for example, make a puppet head with crumpled up paper and cover it with painter's tape. You can kind of shape it and sculpt it as you go to uh, give it personality, to different, you know, features, things like that. It's the same with these. So I'm thinking of like things that are, let's see. Maybe a butterfly. I mean, the, the butterfly metaphors are really, really, really interesting. That idea again of transformation and things like that. But I almost feel like I want it to be scales, if that makes sense. Something scaly. Hmm. Maybe that's the look that I has been in my head. And Ashley's saying painter's tape is awesome for paint pour coasters too. Oh, how do you of course, so you put the painter's tape down and then you can peel it off as things are setting to give you blocks that haven't been painted on. Yeah, painter's tape, like duct tape, so many different applications. So I'm being a little wasteful here. Maybe I'll cut this one up now that I know I don't need it to be as long. Yeah, something about scales. Hmm. Maybe this is a bit dragon-like. Maybe there's something in this. Maybe the talk about Dungeons and Dragons got me thinking about that world. And another thing I do love about role-playing games like that, and there are many, the opportunities it gives people to embody different aspects of their personalities, to try different things. Right? There are things you can do in art and role play that you can't necessarily do in real life. And there's a kind of really beautiful thing when you're with a group of people that you trust. There's something really lovely about having an opportunity to practice it in some way, feel what it is like to say things or do things or Express different parts of who you are, right? That's one of the things as an actor that you learn early on is that there's nothing that any actor does that is so very different from who they are. We make choices in everyday life and those choices build up over time. And there are parts of our personalities, of our pasts, that as an actor you can choose to heighten or play down. And that's what acting is. Every human being has all the same components. It's about what we draw out. It's about what we choose to heighten or strengthen or amplify or quiet and subdue. That really makes a difference. Oh, okay, so with regard to paint pouring and painter's tape, Ashley says, yes, so painter's tape is used to mask or block areas out and to keep the backs clean. Oh, of course, because paint would go everywhere. So that painter's tape does its job. It helps, that's lovely. Oh, Simone says, have to go now. Appreciated the collective mask consciousness. Lovely. Thanks, everyone. Well, thank you, Simone. And please keep us updated about that project. And feel free to share if you have any uh, workshops, some online workshops that you're going to be doing with the community. Uh, you're someone that is just lovely, extraordinary to work with. And I imagine there are a lot of folks who'd like to participate in something like that. Have a wonderful day. And folks, it is nearing the time. It's so funny. I started late. And so today's group is running till four, but it's already quarter to four. That happened so quickly. How did that time pass by? Whenever I'm in the art hive, time flies. As I make these little fins. So again, in my show and tell picture, things are gonna look a little muddy. They'll look a little strange. It's another work in progress piece. But I hope, again, as with all my work in progress uh, images or works, whatever they might be, I do hope to return to them and one day show you what things, hopefully finish them off and share them when they're done. So 
So let's see what happens when this is here. So, okay. So now that I've got this going, I think what I will do is try to just blend those in a little bit, secure them in place with some more paper. Another reason to hold on to paper bags and newsprint, you never know when you might want to do some paper mache. And as I was mentioning, it is getting, uh, there's less of it around, I feel, which perhaps is a good thing. Less going into recycling or landfill. <laughs> but as always, thank you to everyone who's joined us today. Thank you to everyone who is watching it once it's archived. Thank you to the folks who are being quiet and listening along as you do whatever you're doing. Thank you to the folks who are creating and contributing to the creative energy of this space in that way. Okay. So, once the once this dries, I will have some options, just so in case you are making your own mask in between now and the next time I update this process. The great thing about the paper is that you can trim it, you can cut it, so once it dries and you remove it, you have an opportunity to give it a little more shape. And as long as that foundation is secure enough and you're not adding anything on that's too heavy to sort of pull everything down, you'll be able to continue working on it and giving it, giving it shape, giving it form, giving it character, painting it. And the only thing I might recommend for folks who are getting adventurous with their mask making is if you're adding things on like horns or anything that uh, projects a little, you know, that sort of sticks out, just to be mindful again of weight, how heavy you make it. So using newspaper, crumpled up newspaper, or even a wire armature, like using wire to give it a shape and keep it hollow, for example, would help with the weight, to keep it lightweight. And making sure that you have enough paper mache securing it wherever it's attached to the mask to make sure it won't fall off or pull the mask down if it's something you choose to wear. Not the end of the world, and you can always change or adjust, reapply certain things if you need to. Just something to think about. But this is one of those projects that you don't need to rush. It'll be waiting for you. And once you get the hang of it, it is a little addictive. You kind of want to continue making as many masks as you possibly can. After the first mask, you're like, well, what else? What other kinds of masks can I make? What other parts of myself can I externalize in this way and explore? And the paste, if you're making the cornstarch paste, if you put a little salt into it, so it's cornstarch, water, hot water, like boiling water. Uh, if you put a little salt into it, a tablespoon or so per cup of cornstarch, it'll also prevent it getting moldy. So you can put a lid on it, sort of seal it up to keep it from drying out, put it in the fridge, and then reactivate it when you want to use it next. You get a couple of weeks out of it that way. And Ashley's saying, do you remember when clown masks, the, oh, the decorative uh, clown masks were really popular back in the 1990s. Do I ever? And one of the reasons why I remember those so much is in the last year the studio was open, we had a giant donation of those. Um, I think someone must have been 
you know, tidying up, maybe changing up their apartment. And I think we got about six or seven of them in. And they were definitely those 80s ones, kind of highly lacquered, inspired by the ones that were made. I suppose originally it would have been a trend in the 1920s, 1920s, 1930s, leading to the 40s as well, 40s and 50s actually. Um, yeah, exploring just all different, like they're very, very interesting, kind of highly aesthetic, highly stylized faces. Yeah, I remember those. Yeah, usually uh, sort of feminine in the way they looked. Not clown, not necessarily clownish in the way of like circus clowns, although there were quite a lot. I guess, you know what, it would have been inspired by the Comedia. Oh, and who's the character? Oh, who is the character? Someone, oh, my Comedia teachers are shaking a finger at me now. Someone out there will remember and put it in the comments. There is a character. Harlequin? Maybe. Of course Harlequin. Um, Harlequino, who had a specific look that we saw in a lot of those masks as well, with the diamonds and the teardrops and a uh, very specific kind of whimsical longing, an energy of whimsical longing that was put out there. But yeah, there were so many of those in the 80s. <laughs> a lot of folks maybe even have them now. So I'm just going to soften some of these edges with the cornstarch and then I think it might be time to let this do its thing. If you have enough layers on it as well, you can also sand these down, depending on the strength of the, the cornstarch and how it dries and how thick your mask is, which is a nice little thing to be able to do. I can't quite see around all the corners, but again, anything that you're not happy with, once things dry, you can smooth out or add on more layers afterwards. And uh, yeah, experiment with this. If you're having a go, experiment with it. And then we'll return and see. No. But definitely remember those masks. There is something, I mean, human beings from the beginning of time, we have created masks. Masks for culture, masks for ritual, masks for communicating with one another and the creators that we believe in, the deities that we might worship at any given time. We've always found something very special about using something to amplify or to disguise or to liberate something within ourselves. Um, it can be a very useful tool. And I definitely encourage anyone, if you haven't already ever made a mask for yourself, Explore it. And I think what that prompt that Simone had, or even the prompt that M's teacher asked, uh, you can look at it from, like M M's teacher from the perspective of a superhero and a superpower, and what would that mask represent? You can look at it in the, same, in the way that Simone is considering for that workshop that they're doing about what, how do you show up for yourself? Where's, what does that superhero look like? What's you know, that superhero that shows up to take care of you, to help you do or be what you need to be in the moment. There's so many ways of exploring this theme. And of course it can just be for fun, just purely for fun. So let's see if I can find a way to lift this up and just shift it a little bit. Come here, come here, let's see, I need something, a little piece of cardstock. aha, I will use you. I'm going to trim those pieces off there. Boop! Just for the time being. I'm going to take this piece of cardstock and I'm just going to kind of wiggle it around the edge where I've kind of sealed what I've been doing to the mat just to lift it off a little bit and it'll help prevent it from drying completely stuck to the mat. But this is definitely a messy creative activity, if you haven't been able to tell so far. So if you're going to do it, prepare for a little mess, a little gooiness. Have a damp rag on hand to help. 
All right. And let's see if I can actually lift it off, move it around a little bit. Okay. In one kind of close up situation. Woo! Let's get it in the picture. Let's see. So, so far, that is what I have. And I'll be able to, yeah, trim that down. It's really interesting looking at it. Look in the monitor. I know it'll be really fascinating to look at once it dries and I can lift it off and actually put it on my face to continue the build, to trim it down, to add color or additional life to it. But definitely something interesting's going on there. And I'm so, so happy that I chose to do this activity today. It's always interesting. There's always a moment where I'm like, should I? Oh, it's gonna be messy. It's gonna be so much work and cleaning up and blah, 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 blah. But I'm really glad that I took this creative risk with you folks today and dug out all my mask stuff and just had some fun getting messy and thinking about identity and self and how we show ourselves to the world, the things we hide from the world, the things we keep to ourselves, um, the things we may want to draw upon more as we move through the world in these strange and uncertain times. It's a fun thing to try, yeah. So give yourself a gift and explore making a mask one day just to do it, physicalize it, get it out into the world and see what it looks like. See what you look like when you make something creative with that idea of self. Does that make sense? Yeah? Mask making is a really fun project. You'll never get tired of it, but hopefully I'll keep you updated about how this one progresses. Uh, but in the meantime, as we are wrapping up today, thank you so much for being here, everyone. Thank you for the folks who joined us in the live stream. Thank you for the folks who are watching it once it's archived. You are all such remarkable individuals with so much that you give the world every day and so much that you will continue to give. And that potential, that capacity to show up as Simone, as Simone said, is such a beautiful thing. Um, and an extra beautiful thing when you remember that the person you show up for first uh, should be, well, it should be ourselves, shouldn't it? Showing up for yourself before you show up as a superhero for anyone else in your life. So I invite you to take that into the week ahead, to take care of yourself, uh, take care of that special part of yourself that you need to be there for you, for your wellness, for everything that helps you do what you do in the community. But I think this is a good place to leave it for today. Got a lot to think about, that creative warrior spirit mask that I'm creating. Again, I think there's some journaling that's gonna happen after I take my dog for a walk, but folks, until we can connect and create with one another again in person. I look forward to connecting and creating with you right here online. We'll see you again soon. Take care, stay creative, and thank you for everything you are and everything you do. Bye everybody. <laughs>